and welcome to this week's Damp Show with me, Damp Sam. It's a reaction video, so we're going to be uh, looking at how to stop mold and condensation, a complete guy. And uh, it's with a guy called Charlie DIY. This has had a million views or over a million views, this uh, video, and it's from three years ago. Now, damp and mould and to a lesser extent condensation problems stem from the humidity levels in your house or relative humidity levels, we'll come on to that later, being too high. So let's quickly run through the five main sources or generators of moisture, humidity in your home. Number one, we've got cooking and kettle boiling. Number two, we've got bathing. Number three, washing. Number four, breathing, and that accounts for half a litre a day per person. And if you're exercising in your house, you can probably triple that. And number five, moisture entering the house through basements, crawl spaces, and walls. Now, these moisture... Basically, water sources. So any sources of moisture adds to humidity in your property. And um, different times of year, you get more... Um, and different times you, you get less. If you keep your windows shut, it adds up. If you open them, uh, it changes. So this is what we say about condensation season. People keep the windows shut longer and um, you can't change that air, that heavy moist air. Moisture generators exist all year round, but in the winter, the problem comes to a head because the winter is heating season. We close our windows and we reduce ventilation and circulation of the air in our home to keep out the cold. At the same time, rain and melting snow can increase the moisture entering our home through the crawl spaces, basements and walls as I mentioned just now. As less moisture leaves the house, the humidity levels start to rise. At the same time, you get condensation because parts of the house that are in direct contact with the cold air outside are cooler than the air inside. And an example of that is single glazed windows and uninsulated walls. The temperature difference combined with the warm, moist air can cause condensation on. So he's, Charlie's got single glazed uh, windows, probably a listed building. So uh, you can't change them. But what, what I'm going to say is um, the ombudsman, the housing ombudsman um, and government have put up a picture and said what is acceptable and what's not acceptable um, in properties, in rented, in rented accommodation. And the picture that the uh, government's put up is condensation that's formed on a double glazed window and it's in a corner just down here like that and it goes across at an angle there like that and that's all it is. So this is Charlie DIY's mansion that he's worked, you know, he's, he's worked hard for his money or might have read it passed down, I don't know. He lives in a, probably lives in a lovely, lovely place and these are his windows. Um, but government are saying that if you just get a little bit of condensation in, in, in your window, you have to complain to ombudsman. So um, this is what I will I run about on my last um, podcast, uh, the Damp Show podcast. The uh, they're gonna the, next year, so end of this year, twenty twenty three, and beginning of next year, the housing ombudsman is going to be inundated with complaints uh, because everybody gets condensation in the windows uh no matter you know what size house you've got or you know how much money you've got it it all depends on different factors on those surfaces so what happens if you fail to manage that increased moisture during the winter months well for a start all that wetness will attract mold growth and moisture stains and in the worst case as you can see here the fabric of your house, particularly plasterboard, will start to rot. Unsurprisingly, it can also have an adverse impact on our health as we need normal humidity to feel comfortable. Too much moisture can cause allergies and asthmatic conditions. Dust mites, for example, thrive... I, it it kind of got that wrong. So um, too much moisture um, can't cause asthmatic conditions. It, uh, it aggravates them, so it'll, it can set off underlying conditions it don't cause them you 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 get them conditions through however i'm not a doctor but it it doesn't cause them 
it doesn't make you have them. It can uh, irritate these conditions. About 23 to 27 degrees or a relative humidity of 70 to 80 percent but actually stop growing and die out at humidities of less than 60 percent and mold loves humid conditions at a relative humidity of 80 percent mold will grow 50 percent of the time and mold spores can contribute to asthma in children and cause allergies and finally except the, the, uh, it's wrong again there so it doesn't cause asthma in in children they get asthma for other, for other reasons it aggravates asthma it'll 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 set off underlying conditions so um you know it, it's high humidity and um and it can set off underlying conditions excessive moisture has an impact on electronics as well it can corrode contacts and cause short circuits as i found out to my cost when i left my dad's olympus om1 camera in my damp basement so that's all pretty straightforward and dare I say it a bit obvious, but this is where it gets more interesting because if you're going to understand your own humidity problems, the extent of those problems and what you've got to do to solve them, you've got to be able to measure the humidity in your own home. And point two, you've got to understand a little bit more about the science behind it. So a year ago when I started researching for this video, I bought this hygrometer. This gives me the ability to measure indoor temperature, but also humidity in both Celsius and Fahrenheit. More recently, to catch as much data as possible, I bought this additional hygrometer. This is a wireless indoor and outdoor humidity and temperature monitor. It comes with an additional sensor which has given me the ability not only to set up another internal temperature point but also to monitor the outdoor temperature and relative humidity. These things are cheap and an absolutely essential purchase if you're going to tackle the problems you've got in your house. Well, put simply, you can't just talk about humidity in isolation because the temperature of the air affects the amount of moisture the air can hold. Vapor pressure also comes into it, but we won't worry too much about that in today's video. So relative... Yeah, so relative humidity, the amount of moisture in the air relative to the amount of moisture that the air can hold influenced by its temperature expressed as a percentage um that when, when i did my exams you had that on end because when you'll see the figures are um it's 68 percent or some percent it is expressed as a, a percentage but air molecules hold the moisture and air molecules are kind of round circular and um when the air gets warmer they'll expand and hold more moisture. And when the air cools, they, uh, they get smaller. And that's when the uh, moisture condenses out of the air molecule because it can't hold that amount of air. It's like wringing a sponge out. Relative humidity is the amount of moisture in the air relative to the amount of moisture that air can hold, influenced by its temperature. In short, the warmer the air, the higher its capacity to hold moisture, and that's really important because when you go out and buy your hygrometer and turn the heating on, you'll actually find the relative humidity level in your house drops. Now, that doesn't mean the moisture content in your air has dropped, far from it. What that means is that capacity of the air to hold moisture has gone up. So if anything, you're just masking the problem that already exists. So why is it boring us about relative humidity, I hear you ask? Well, I'll tell you why. It's really important to understand relative humidity if you can get to the bottom of why you're getting condensation on your windows. And here's why. Condensation forms when airborne water vapor comes in contact with a surface which is colder than the dew point. And by that surface, we're typically talking here about single glazed windows. I mean, it, it's, it is... I don't know whether what audience um, Charlie's aimed at, um, but it, it is quite. Um, I don't know. There's a lot, there seems to be a lot of stats and stuff. So, um, I mean, easiest thing, easiest thing to say is, you know what I mean. If you've got a mirror in a bathroom when you have a, a shower, condensation forms on it. One, it's not it's non-porous, and um, water vapor is a gas that will not go through it. And two, it's normally a colder surface. So, and then you get it on tiles as well. Um, I mean, he's, he's, he's mentioning it about dual point, but I, I think 97% of people, you know, that um, watch, watch these kind of things are affected by these problems. 
they don't want to know that, they just want to know a solution. And what happens is that surface cools the air immediately next to the, the window itself. And as we now know, when you cool air, it can't hold as much moisture. So the net result is the relative humidity in that little area of air next to the window goes up. When that relative humidity level gets to 100%, it reaches saturation point or its dew point, and the air next to the window can't hold any more moisture, so it deposits it on the cold window. So what you've effectively got and what I've got with my bay windows is a massive dehumidifier. Not very helpful for us, but you can understand why it's a dehumidifier, because it's basically extracting moisture out of the air. It's kind of not extracting moisture out of air. It's the, the condensation is forming on that surface and the water is condensing out of the air molecules onto that surface. Um, I think he's going to explain how a dehumidifier works now. So basically it pulls, it pulls air through that grill and there's a, there's a, a metal plate, a cool metal plate on the inside and that acts like what he just said, similar to that window. So when it when it is that dew point, the water trickles down and then into a tray. If you haven't got one already, you should really try and install an extractor fan in your bathroom, something like this. This one switches on when you turn on the lights and only switches off when the inbuilt humid stat decides that the moisture levels have dropped to the right level. This is particularly a problem you've got with them, humidistat ones, um, unless you're buying a top of range one, your cheaper ones will just run and run and run and run, um, and they tend to burn out because most properties are humid. And unless it's a you've paid a bit of money for it, it can be, you know, they can be quite loud. They do quite quieter ones, but you're paying a bit more for them. Um, again, I'd I'd say invest in a continuously running, low carbon um, extractor fan, which will be on a trickle when it's off. And then when you turn light on, it turns into a, there's a booster comes on and then it'll stay on a bit, bit longer. But they're, for me, they're, they're top ones. They're best ones to have. good for landlords anxious to keep moisture levels low in rental properties where you don't want your tenants to override and switch off the extractor fan. The next two bathroom moisture management points are really important but sadly something that landlords cannot have any control over the tenants on. In our house we have a strict rule of opening the window when we have a shower which is mostly complied with. My daughter's getting a bit slack on it and you can see from this clip just how much moisture escapes through the window during showering. And finally only thing is, uh, Charlie, if it's if it's hammering it down, if it's foggy, if it's misty outside, you open window, um, that humid air is going to come in. So um, this is where you know common sense has to prevail. If it's if weather is poor outside, in that sense, raining, foggy, uh, misty, then you know keep your window shut. Let let your extractor fan up, um, you know, because it, it's just going to end up even wetter in bathroom. Finally, after each shower, we've got into the habit of squeegeeing down the shower screen, walls, and even the shower tray. Fundamentally, this is great if you live in a hard water area to prevent lime scale on your glass, but also it removes an incredible amount of moisture. As an experiment this morning. It's a good idea, that. That's a brilliant idea. But um, I think rental properties and tenanted properties um, these people just will not do it. Um, I don't know whether people's got as much time on their hands as old Charlie. Um, I don't know what he does for a job, but um, a lot of people, they, they just don't do it. They get in the shower, they just want to get out, do the makeup or whatever, get dressed, do all the bits and bobs, um, and get on with whatever they're going to be doing, watching Coronation Street or something, or watching telly, putting YouTube on, I bet. Morning, I used our cartridge window back to do exactly this, and this is how much moisture was removed. A staggering 200 millilitres of water that would otherwise have simply evaporated. I mean, another thing as well, I mean, Charlie's shower is as big as, big as some people's bathrooms. I mean, they, they do a 600 by 600 uh, shower, which is it's just over half a metre by half a metre, 
you can't even you can't even knock your arms up. So imagine trying to use a catcher in one of them. It's it's smaller than a phone box, and uh, people take showers in them. Uh, Charlie's on Charlie's estate, obviously wealthy man. It, it, some people's showers are not that big, um, and ain't got that much elbow room. Move on. Let's have a quick chat about drying racks. Drying racks are obviously a bit of a disaster area when it comes to moisture in the house because all of that damp that in the clothes is basically being lifted out and deposited in the air, yeah. which is going to have a very negative effect on the Agreed. relative humidity levels inside your house. Now, whenever you can, you should obviously use a tumble dryer, but I know this is difficult if you're in a rental property and you haven't got one or you can't afford the increased electricity bills that tumble drying all your clothes admittedly has but just hold that thought and later on I'm going to be talking to you about dehumidifiers which are a really great proactive way of giving you the ability to use drying racks whilst also extracting the moisture from the air that's caused. So that's how lifestyle can impact on the humidity levels in your house. Let's now talk about dehumidifiers and positive input ventilation systems. So in our existing homes, it's simply not practical, let alone cost effective for us to install all the ducting that would be required for one of these heat recovery systems we saw earlier. But often the next best thing is perceived to be a positive input ventilation system. As you can see here with these two new air systems for flats and houses with lofts, the idea of this system is you install it in the loft in a central location and it pumps fresh air into the house via the loft space in order to try and circulate the air around your house. So uh, it doesn't try and circulate air, it does circulate the air because it's positive input. So it's putting clean air in 100% um, of the time and forces the damp air out through fissures and cracks but these are only any good if you've got um a well vented loft space so so don't just let anybody like rock up and say yeah that's going you know you need a piv and that's going to go in there so what you need to do is you need to have a proper survey done so they need to see whether your loft space has got fresh um clean well fresh air it's got air it's well vented the last thing you want to do is when that humid air is going up diffusing up through the ceilings into your roof space then recirculating and then coming back in even though it's been filtered so all these systems are great because they do away with all that ducting that you need with a proper heat recovery system that you and I just can't practically install in our old houses. I do see a couple of problems with these units. Number one, from the research I've done from the forums I've visited, people say that in the absence of a proper heat recovery unit, even with the 400 watt heater, which after all only tempers the air coming into the house, it does create very chilly spaces where the unit's located. It can, and this is why you need a survey. Uh, if you've not got blanking plates and it's close to a wall, then that that air will hit the side of the wall and then come straight down, and you will feel it. And it's the same if it's in a, a stairwell. Um, yeah, so you've got, you've got to be careful where you're going to be putting these things. And your electricity bills could rise significantly reheating that space. Point two. In my house, I can't install one of these units because this corridor would be the obvious place to install it. But unfortunately, this is not a loft above here. It's the valley between two roofs. And you're not meant to install them in the bathroom where I do have a loft because if somebody's just had a shower, all the unit's going to be doing is flushing that moist, damp air all around the house. See, that's a, that's a good point. That's a great point, what, what Charlie makes. And a lot of people um, don't realise this. So... If you if you have it in a kitchen or a, a bathroom, it will push that air into all the parts of out to your pro property. This is why they said put it in a, a central location. It's normally like in a stairwell, and then it can disperse into other rooms. But do let me know in the comment section below if you've had one of these in units installed, whether you found it unmanageably chilly in the area where the unit's been installed, but also whether you found it sorted out your condensation problems. Because I'm a little bit sceptical as to whether... See, Charlie's sh uh, ceilings as well, they're, they're really low. And these work better in, a, in a houses with higher ceilings because 
the air that's inside your property that's normally warmer it kind of mixes with it with the air that's uh, coming out of the unit which is supposed to be blown at ceiling height so you blow it across ceiling height you've got air, warm air that's rising and it mixes and you're not supposed to feel it so this is why they have to be uh, positioned correctly so that's it for today i've gone on for far too long over 24 minutes i'm sorry about that i was just wanting to make the video as comp <laughs> get it get all the adverts in get all the adverts in for new air and e-back comprehensive as possible for you and i hope it's given you some good ideas as to how there's you a million people watch it Charles. get yourself one of these it's an absolute lifesaver well, where you have just, an, just another quick advert for catch i've got condensation you can't sort out i'll put post links to that as there well as everything go. else in the description at the end of the video which don't forget on your smartphone you can access by clicking on the little arrow and on your computer by clicking the show more button if you've liked today's video do please click on the like button below and if you're new to my channel it would mean so much to me if you were to subscribe you can do that by clicking on the link here thanks and see you soon so i like charlie he's a, he's a, he seems a decent fella but um just advert 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 for for different things which you know listen if he's not working and if he's uh, doing making content for um for youtube fair play to him fair play to him um he's probably got a, a membership per site as well but if you and well, we have so if you want to become a member of damp sam's uh channel a damp fan then uh our all <laughs> All our money is getting reinvested into new equipment. So, um, yeah. So, click that button and uh, watch some more reaction videos. I hope you've enjoyed it today and uh, and we've introduced you to someone new. So, you know, we watch some of Charlie's stuff and uh, other damp people's things, as well as um, our old friend um, Roger Bisbee. So, watch a few of his stuff as well. All right. So, that's Damp Sam signing off. I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, See you later. Goodbye now.